Sonia Stapleton here, Dublin City Council. We're all here today fighting for houses for people that are living on the streets, people living on overcrowded couches, the whole lot. It's a disgrace. So we have 3, 000, over 3,000 children homeless in this country. When we've got our government taking pay rises, it's so wrong. We have to do something about this and it has to be, it has to be changed now. We can't live like this any longer. We need to start building social houses today. Thank you. My father entered with a lamb, the kitchen heat to keep it warm. I was old enough to know a morning rescue from the snow. He held the lamb with love and care to save its life close to the fire. Its mother must have died on it. We raised the lamb a family pet. That rescued lamb forgotten till a lady lost her flock from hill. Two hundred fleeces disappeared, her children bullied, her husband jailed. Please don't forget that stolen flock, a lady lost in County Cork, the law that did not want to know, who stole what took a life to grow. Joe Ducey, bless him, travelled far to help her in an evil hour. And this is how the state thanked Joe. They locked him up some months ago. Goramila Mayagov. these water charges and everything being brought in like you know and the water the water's there it falls from the sky and that but uh, basically what's going on the level of corruption in this country is absolutely disgusting so it is ireland is riddled with co corruption and it's not just the parties that are in power it's all across the board all of the political parties they all even even the opposition parties they're starting out with good intent and they're torn and then it becomes about the party. Everything becomes about the party and not the people. And they get caught up in their own little bubble of serving themselves. Now, the people talk about corruption and everybody thinks about the doll, okay? There's a lot of corruption going on in the doll. But really and truly, where Ireland is being run by small groups of people, very powerful families. Now, I've been, I've been involved in activism now maybe for 15 or 16 years. I'm 33 years of age. I, I had to pull back out of it for my own mental health. Uh, two years ago or so, and I'm only kind of coming back into it now. Well, I've been still doing a bit in the background, but what I want to talk about is um, the corruption, where the corruption is really going on, and how these uh, the elite are pulling off all these uh, or all the corruption is actually at local government. A lot of stuff happens at local government, and people have lost, or they, they, they're not following what's going on in local government. And I'll, give you, I'll tell you why it's going on there, because to pull off a stroke... Most places to pull off a stroke is going to happen where there's money coming in. So you're talking about the health service. There's corruption in, in the health service because that's pe there's money in health, you know. Um, when we know there's, there's money in, 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 in cancer, um, there's serious profits to be made in cancer. And that's why some people are being denied uh, alternatives to medication that, uh, that can actually treat this. Um, and that, that's a big thing. But one of the big cro things is local government, right? And where you get politics. If you want to find out and you want to get these people... You go looking into local government and you go looking into land deals. So that's what we did in Dundalk. Um, our hospital closed in 2007 in Dundalk and from a lack of, lack of money. 
And what actually, the mad thing about that was, there was no money to pay for the hospital, okay? But yet that year, the bank, the, the, the bank bailout and all was, was happening, okay? So an example, one example of what was going on was there was a Fine Gael Labour uh, political dynasty called the Malones. Now, Let me tell you this, these are gone too far and we have to get rid of this terrible, terrible austerity and this terrible greed, this greed that is upon us among this government. These are living on cloud land, born with golden spoons, the majority of them. And I say it's time for the people to, to get up, stand up and get them out and put people who does care, who has a heart, because these are cold bitter people that's in there. And all they're thinking of them is themselves. And all they want to do is to get into photographs and show that they're there, and then they're gone. But the real people who's there is on the ground, is us, the ordinary Joe Soap. And we know more than they do. So we need to, we need to get the materials off them there's people in the communities willing to do all over Ireland, willing to give their services free. Now, I'm sick of this word, uh, insurance, from the council. I'm sick and tired of it. Insulting our actual intelligence, because we are actually intelligent people here. With our documentation and well uh, capable, we have plasterers, we have plumbers, we have surveyors, we have every kind of person you could think of all want to do it free. All we want from that minister, Owen Murphy, is to give us the materials. I've been outside Doyle Arden, I've been outside the, the, the City Hall in Cork, and I've had to chain myself to the custom house to get the people housed before there's another dead one on our on air, air watch. They, were, they died on air watch because they were all on the Holliers worrying about how they spend their money and going around our big limos and didn't give a damn about the people. But we care about the people. And there will be a rebellion because the, the people are rising. And my God, there's a new there's a new a new party coming. And we're gonna push them right out and we'll show them how it's done. The ordinary people. Because we have a heart. And what we're not going to be greedy either. Never will be. We we won't make promises that they, they never fulfilled. We will fulfill them because it's in us to do so. We'll show them how it's done. Now, uh, my name is Stephen Manning. I'm the uh, founder of the Integrity Ireland Project. Um, I'm just going to speak briefly today on the, the topic is corruption in high places and specifically in our courts. On a recent visit to Ireland, Judge Judy Scheindler, that's Judge Judy of the TV, was astonished to discover that there is a, a no recording rule in our courts, that our family courts operate in complete secrecy, and that in certain cases, people can be jailed for life without even appearing before a jury. She thought it remarkable that such a secretive justice system exists in a supposed modern de democratic country. What she wasn't told was that all of our judges are politically appointed, that they don't even have to declare their business interests, and that there is an epidemic of misconduct and criminality ongoing in our courts, and it's not the petty criminals that are to blame for this either. Edmund Burke, the noted Irish statesman, famously said, all it takes for evil to succeed is for good people, like us, to do nothing. But, he, but we are here today to try and do something. Evil takes many forms in modern Ireland. We have been beset by scandal after shocking scandal for decades now. The industrial schools, the Magdalen laundries, the mother and baby, baby homes, corrupt politicians selling off our natural resources, banking inquiries, dodgy NAMA sales, Garda scandals, the homeless crisis, the insidious targeting of whistleblowers and social activists, and so on. And there is one common denominator that underpins all of these scandals, and that is 
the exploitation of the poor, the weak, the marginalized, and the vulnerable by those in positions of power and authority, and the subsequent cover-ups by agents and agencies of the state. You see, we're supposed to be living in a so-called modern democratic republic, complete with a robust justice system, which is designed to enforce and protect our fundamental rights. And this is what I want to talk about briefly here today. The increasingly obvious fact that our so-called justice system is absolutely and utterly unfit for purpose, and which, generally speaking, is no more and no less than another instrument of oppression and exploitation, staffed in the main by politically connected insiders whose primary motive is not to serve justice, but to serve and protect their superiors and colleagues in the status quo, regardless of the rights or wrongs involved. And as we have seen in the recent Jobstown trials, or even in my own unlawful incarceration, where I was placed in jail without any legal representation, without even entering a defense, that these people will use any trick, deception, or ruse to achieve those shameful ends, safe in the knowledge that they are, in effect, exempt from any real accountability. You see, Ireland is just small enough and just big enough to be perfectly corrupted. And if you want more details on this, guys, please visit the Integrity Ireland website where we go into some more detail about how this has come about. But here in this country, secrecy, silence, and stonewalling are particularly effective, partly because our so-called statutory oversight bodies, such as the Garda Ombudsman, the Financial Regulator, or the Irish Human Rights Commission, for example, the, these are all staffed by hand-picked connected insiders who, just like the mainstream media outlets, balk at the prospect of naming the great big elephant in the room. Namely, that Ireland operates in effect not as a properly functioning democracy with liberty and justice for all, but as a dysfunctional, corrupt kleptocracy, which means people stealing stuff all the time, basically, where those in power thrive by deceiving, exploiting, and stealing from the people. And it's not just our money and natural resources that they are stealing. They are also robbing our futures. They are abusing our trust. They are even stealing our children for immediate financial gain in the secret family courts. And they are taking away our peace, our quality of life, and our standing as a nation of good and decent people. In short, these people are hijacking our country, our heritage, and our trust in order to make sure that they and their cronies and their political contacts will benefit financially and very personally from the arrangements being made within golden circles at the public's expense. Unfortunately, and very paradoxically, the only lawful recourse for victims of these injustices is to try to seek access to the courts. But what if our courts cannot be trusted either? What if there are some serious questions to be asked about the integrity and probity of our courts and of our judiciary? You can hear the 